The Godzilla Kong Monsterverse begins in Season 1 of the television series Monarch Legacy of Monsters. In 1952, U.S. Army Lieutenant Lee Shaw is sent on a mission to escort a Japanese scientist Keiko on a mission to the Philippines to investigate strange radiation levels. While on their mission, they cross paths with a Navy vet named Bill Randa. Randa explains that a decade prior, while fighting in World War II, his ship was attacked by a mysterious creature and he was the lone survivor. He has dedicated his life ever since to finding the monster and proving its existence to the world, and believes that unbeknownst to Shaw and Keiko, their mission is one and the same. Bill's seemingly crazy tale is proved right when the group are attacked by a creature known as the Ion Dragon, and they all narrowly escape with their lives. Two years later, Shaw, Keiko, and Randa all work for a secret international organization known as Monarch, whose mission is to hunt and study the mysterious monstrous creatures hidden throughout the Earth, which have been dubbed Titans. The trio have discovered that the Titans feed on radiation, and upon discovering the footprints of one of the monsters, they believe they can lure it out of hiding for research purposes by baiting it with uranium. The group gets funding from the US military and uses uranium to lure a massive lizard-like titan known as Godzilla out of the ocean. Unfortunately, the military has no interest in research and drops bombs on the creature to kill it. Lee reluctantly allows the attack to go through, while Keiko is devastated. The military is impressed by this event and gives Monarch a blank check to fund their discovery of more titans. In 1955, Randa and Keiko follow a lead to a place known as Monster Island, where a Monarch scientist has detected the presence of a titan. Shaw abandons a meeting to secure more government funding for Monarch to travel to Monster Island, as he has developed romantic feelings for Keiko and wants to ensure her safety. The group are then confronted by a Titan, which reveals itself to be Godzilla, alive and well after surviving the military's attack. Not wanting to reveal Godzilla's survival to the military, which would inspire them to create dangerous super weapons to combat the Titans, Shaw, Keiko, and Randa keep Godzilla's survival a secret. With years going by since a Titan spotting, the military takes control of Monarch, places the gruff Lieutenant Hatch in command, and threatens to cut off government funding. Knowing the future of Monarch is in jeopardy, Randa works harder than ever before having a revelation and coming up with the Hollow Earth theory. The Titans can't hide themselves so easily because the Earth is in fact hollow, and there is an entire secret world hidden beneath its surface. Upon taking this theory to Keiko, Randa discovers that she has a secret child named Hiroshi. Randa professes his love for Keiko and offers to help raise her son. Meanwhile, the military pay no mind to Randa's Hollow Earth theory, so Shaw is forced to reveal Godzilla's survival to ensure Monarch's continued funding. In 1959, Keiko and Randa, now married, travel to Kazakhstan with Shaw to study a location they believe could confirm Randa's Hollow Earth theory. Underneath an abandoned nuclear power plant, they uncover caverns containing the eggs of a new Titan species known as Indoswarmers. As the eggs begin to hatch, the group attempts to flee from the attacking titans. Tragically, Keiko becomes overwhelmed by the Indoswarmers and is pulled into the depths of the caverns to her death. In 1962, Monarch has discovered a way to enter the supposed Hollow Earth. Shaw bids farewell to his best friend Bill Randa and his surrogate nephew Hiroshi, before leading a team on a journey to hopefully discover a new world. The team's state-of-the-art pod follows a titan into an underground rift, but quickly loses control and communication to the Monarch team above. Randa is left devastated as Shaw and his team plummet into an unknown oblivion, with no way of determining their fates or if the Hollow Earth Earth even exists. Breaking bad habits can be really difficult, but it's never been easier than with this video sponsor, Fume. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of making a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just take the bad out of the habit? Fume is an innovative air-flavored device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious, all-natural flavors. So, you get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Each Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while trying to break your habit. There's also a variety of different flavors you can choose from. My personal favorite is Orange Vanilla. I genuinely wasn't sure what 
what to expect while trying Fume for the first time, but the flavor is actually really great and fresh. The actual weight and feel of it is just as nice and solid as it looks, and I feel pretty cool while using it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and fun. Fume has over 150,000 different customers and thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that one of those can't be you. So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up your journey pack today. So head to tryfume.com slash recap and chill or scan that QR code in the corner and use code recap and chill at checkout to get 10% off your journey pack. That's tryfum.com slash recap and chill to get 10% off your order. Thanks so much to Fume for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the recap. The story continues in the film Kong Skull Island. In 1973, Bill Randa finally secures government funding to continue his research into Hollow Earth, now aided by a fellow scientist named Houston Brooks. Brooks believes that the key to confirming the existence of a Hollow Earth resides on the mysterious Skull Island. Joining Randa and Brooks on their journey are a team of researchers, Lieutenant Colonel Preston Packard and his unit of U.S. Army soldiers, expert tracker and former British Special Force Forces Captain James Conrad, and anti-war photographer Mason Weaver. Upon arriving at Skull Island, the group begins dropping seismic bombs developed by Brooks to detect whether or not its surface is hollow. This experiment is abruptly halted when the group is attacked by a giant ape, which kills many of the soldiers, and separates the survivors into disparate groups. Conrad and Weaver lead a faction of survivors to discover a group of island natives known as the Iwi, and a U.S. Air Force pilot named Hank Marlow who crash-landed and has been stranded on the island for nearly three decades. Marlowe explains that the giant ape has been named Kong by the island natives, who view the creature as the island's protector. Kong is the last of his kind, as all of his species has been killed by another group of dangerous island creatures known as Skull Crawlers. After the remaining survivors regroup, Conrad and Weaver insist on fixing up a boat to leave the island and Kong in peace. When the group are attacked by a Skull Crawler, which tragically kills Bill Randa. Packard insists on salvaging their weapon supply and killing the Skull Crawlers and Kong to avenge his fallen comrades. As Packard and his team head off to gather their weapons, Conrad and Weaver prepare to leave the island with Marlowe and Brooks. But after a peaceful encounter with Kong, the group decides to intervene to stop Packard and save the giant ape. As Packard and his team lure Kong into a trap, Conrad and Weaver arrive and persuade Packard's soldiers to abandon their colonel's commands. Packard refuses to stand down, but is interrupted when a giant skull crawler arrives to battle Kong. Packard is crushed to death as Kong and the Skull Crawler get into a brutal fight. Just as the Skull Crawler gets the upper hand and prepares to kill Kong, the humans intervene and help their new ape friend defeat its Skull Crawler rival. The surviving humans then depart Skull Island safely. Marlow returns to his family after 30 years away, while Brooks recruits Conrad and Weaver to join Monarch, revealing that many other titans like Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah posed a giant threat to humanity. The story continues decades later in the film Godzilla. In 1999, monarch scientist Ishiro Sirizawa and Vivian Graham uncover a massive titan skeleton in the Philippines that resembles Godzilla, as well as two giant spores, one which remains dormant, but the other has already hatched and escaped. The creature birthed from that spore secretly arrives in Japan, and its massive size begins creating dangerous tremors and seismic activity. At the Janjira nuclear power plant, the volatile reactor is damaged by the tremors, causing a meltdown. The supervisor of the plant, American scientist Joe Brody, is forced to watch as his wife Sandra and her team of scientists are trapped inside the reactor room, where they all die in the plant's collapse. In 2014, Joe Brody is still grieving his wife's death and refuses to believe the government's explanation that an earthquake caused the reactor meltdown. Joe's son, U.S. Navy officer Ford Brody, comes over from America to help investigate the quarantine reactor zone for any evidence on what caused the meltdown. Inside the plant's ruins, monarch scientists are studying a massive chrysalis that has grown for the past 15 years, feeding off the radioactive energy. A titan emerges from the chrysalis, killing many of the scientists, including, tragically, the grieving Joe Brody. 
Sarazawa and Graham explained to Ford the origins of Monarch, and that a Titan had in fact been responsible for the meltdown, as it feeds on nuclear energy. Ford reveals that Joe had been tracking echolocation from inside Janjira before his death, which the Monarch scientists theorized was the Titan communicating with the long-dormant Godzilla. As the scientists use this newfound information to track the Titans, Ford prepares to return home to San Francisco to reunite with his wife Elle and son Sam. As Ford waits to board a plane in Honolulu, the Titan attacks, killing many innocent people. Godzilla arrives and fights the Titan, causing it to flee, which spares the lives of Ford and many innocent people. Sarazawa deduces that Godzilla is an enemy of the Titan, and therefore it must have been using echolocation to communicate with a different creature. The second spore, which was taken to be stored at a nuclear site in Las Vegas, hatches and wreaks havoc on the city. Sarazawa realizes that the Titan's communications are actually mating calls, and if they unite, they could create an army of deadly Titan babies. Gruff Navy Admiral William Stins approves a plan to use nuclear warheads to lure the two Titans and Godzilla into the ocean off the coast of San Francisco to destroy them all. Sarazawa and Graham are resistant to this plan, but Ford joins a squad to deliver the warheads necessary to complete the mission. Unfortunately, the Titans steal a warhead and bring it to the center of San Francisco, where its detonation would cause cause catastrophic damage and kill countless innocent civilians. As Godzilla arrives to fight the Titans, Ford joins a strike team to enter the city's battleground and deactivate the bomb. Unable to deactivate the bomb, Ford's team decides to take it out into the ocean where it can be safely detonated. As the Titans kill off Ford's team and take back the warhead, Godzilla arrives and fights them off, killing both Titans before collapsing from exhaustion. Thanks to Godzilla's help, Ford manages to get the warhead into the ocean and then safely return to reunite with his family. Godzilla then retreats back into the ocean and the media names him the King of the Monsters, theorizing that he may in fact be humanity's savior. Back to season one of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. It's now 2015, a year after the fight between Godzilla and the Titans destroyed large portions of San Francisco. Kate Randa, the daughter of Hiroshi and granddaughter of Bill and Keiko, is still suffering from PTSD from having having survived the attack. Hiroshi has recently died in a mysterious accident, and Kate travels to Japan to settle his affairs, only to discover that her father had a secret second family, including another wife, Imiko, and a son, Kentaro. Kate and Kentaro are both shocked by this revelation about their father, and agree to work together to uncover all of his secrets. The long-lost half-siblings team up with Kentaro's hacker ex-girlfriend, Mei, to uncover Monarch's secrets that their father, Hiroshi, and step-grandfather father Bill Randa had been working on. May is actually a hacker named Cora Mateo, who worked for a company called Apex Cybernetics, under the guidance of Dr. Brenda Holland, that promised to help change the world. Unfortunately, May discovered that in Apex's desire to help disabled humans walk again, they were conducting dangerous and unethical experiments on apes, which caused May to destroy their research and flee, changing her name and living on the run. Kate Kentaro and May follow Hiroshi's clues to find a shockingly alive and well Lee Shaw. Back in 1962, Shaw's team had successfully crossed through a portal into a world between worlds known as the Axis Mundi. After being attacked by an ion dragon, Shaw became the team's lone survivor. After escaping back through the portal, Shaw was shocked to discover that time works differently in Axis Mundi, and the year was now 1982. There, Shaw met the adult Hiroshi, now working for Monarch, who sadly informed Shaw that Bill Randa is is now dead. Monarch then placed Shaw under house arrest in a retirement community where he has been living ever since. Now, in 2015, Kate, Kentaro, and May bust Shaw out of his Monarch prison to join them on their quest to uncover the truth behind Hiroshi's death. On the group's journey, they are joined by rogue Monarch agents Tim and Duval. Duval reveals herself to be the sister of Sandra Brody, the late mother of Ford Brody who died in the Janjira power plant collapse. The new deputy director of Monarch, Natalia Vertigo has no interest in studying Titans, as is Shaw's desire, and only wants to destroy them at any cost. Shaw's group travel the world, following Hiroshi's trail, and encountering Titans like the Frostvark and even the infamous Godzilla himself, before discovering that Hiroshi is in fact still alive. Shaw and Duval part ways with the others to follow Godzilla and protect it from Monarch, while Kate, Kentaro, and Mei continue their journey to find Hiroshi. Shaw and Duval rally Monarch members to betray Vertigo 
vertigo and join them, using explosives to close a rift to hollow Earth in Alaska, preventing dangerous titans from escaping to the Earth's surface. The closing of the rift causes spikes in radiation across Earth's surface at other rift openings, which Monarch believes could cause more titans to emerge on the surface and cause worldwide devastation. Vertigo sends a team of agents to stop Shaw's team, and Kate Kentaro, May, and Tim volunteer to try to talk Shaw down from his master plan. Everyone reunites at Shaw's next rift target at the Kazakhstan power plant, where Keiko had died half a century prior. Undeterred by both Kate and Monarch's warnings, Shaw explodes the rift. Unfortunately, as the rift collapses, Shaw, Kate, and May are pulled inside and land in the Axis Mundi. Kate is separated from Shaw and May, and while attacked by a titan known as a Bramble Boar, she is rescued by her unaged grandmother, Keiko. Keiko has an emotional reunion with Shaw and an even more emotional introduction to her adult granddaughter, Kate, but is devastated to learn that a few months for her in Axis Mundi has equaled half a century on Earth's surface, and that her beloved husband, Bill Randa, has been dead for several decades. Kentaro and Tim are rescued from the wreckage of the collapsed rift by Monarch, and they assume Shaw, Kate, and May have died. Kentaro returns home to Tokyo, where his alive and well father, Hiroshi, finally reveals himself. Kentaro rebukes his father, devastated stated that his life of secrecy and lies has now led to Kate's death. Hiroshi explains that he has spent his life and career trying to prove the Hollow Earth's existence to honor his parents' legacy. He believes that if Monarch and the government had trusted them and funded their research, then the Titan attacks would have never occurred. In the Axis Mundi, Shaw leads the group to his original exploratory pod, while Keiko activates a distress signal in the hopes that their allies on the surface can pull them out of the rift. As the group attempt to escape Axis Mundi, they are attacked by the Ion Dragon, which damages the pod's cables. As Godzilla arrives to fight the Ion Dragon and save his human allies, Shaw sacrifices himself to fix the cables and ensure his friends make it back to the surface, falling back into the rift and leaving his fate unknown. Kate, May, and Keiko exit the pod on the Earth's surface where they reunite with Kentaro, Hiroshi, and Tim, who reveal that it is now 2017. May is shocked to discover that the group was aided by Dr. Brenda Holland and her reformed Apex Cybernetics, now operating at a research base on Skull Island. The story continues in Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The year is now 2019, and Monarch has developed a device known as the Orca, which can attract and calm titans. As Monarch scientist Dr. Emma Russell and her teenage daughter Madison use the Orca on a titan known as Mothra, their base is attacked by former British Army Colonel Alan Jonah and his team of eco-terrorists. Jonah kidnaps Emma and Madison and steals the Orca for himself. Fellow Monarch scientist Sarah Zawa and Graham track down a former colleague named Mark Russell, who is the ex-husband of Emma and father of Madison. Mark has become disillusioned with Monarch and their mission of peacefully studying the Titans after the Godzilla attack in San Francisco resulted in the death of his son. Despite his hesitance, Mark agrees to accompany Sarazawa and Graham in their mission to stop Jonah and rescue Emma and Madison. The trio track the terrorists to Antarctica, where they discover that Emma is actually working alongside Jonah to reawaken all of the dormant titans in an effort to have the beast re-terraform the earth as humans have decimated the environment. Jonah awakens the three-headed Ghidorah, king of the titans, and Godzilla arrives to fight its hostile rival. In the battle, Godzilla is quickly overpowered and Ghidorah kills Dr. Graham before escaping. Jonah's team flees with Emma and Madison, who is devastated upon learning that her mother is willingly working with terrorists. In Mexico, Madison uses the Orca to wake another titan, Rodan, leading to a battle between Rodan, Godzilla, and Ghidorah. Godzilla manages to rip off one of Ghidorah's heads before Admiral Stins and the U.S. military drops a new titan-killing bomb dubbed the Oxygen Destroyer, which seemingly kills humanity's titan savior. Ghidorah survives the blast and regrows its lost head before awakening all of the dormant titans around the world and forcing them, including Rodan, to submit to its rule.
A near-death Godzilla retreats to the Hollow Earth to heal itself, knowing that Ghidorah and his army of titans could soon destroy the entire world. Sarazawa chooses to sacrifice himself by delivering a nuclear warhead near Godzilla's location so the titan can absorb its energy and heal itself faster. After arriving in Boston, Emma finally begins to realize the destruction that Ghidorah will cause to the Earth, but Jonah refuses to halt his mission. In her efforts to thwart Jonah and save the world, Madison steals the orca and attempts to use it to calm Ghidorah and his titan army. Unfortunately, the orca has no effect on Ghidorah, who arrives to destroy the machine. Luckily, the healed Godzilla arrives and battles Ghidorah once again. Mark leads Monarch to the battle site where they attempt to aid Godzilla and help Madison escape. Amidst the chaos, Mothra arrives to help Godzilla, defeating Rodan but becoming critically injured in the process. As Ghidorah begins to overpower Godzilla, Mothra sacrifices herself to allow Godzilla to absorb her energy. As Ghidorah tries to intercept this power transfer and absorb all of Mothra and Godzilla's powers for itself, a remorseful Emma reconciles with her family and then uses the Orca to distract Ghidorah, allowing Mark, Madison, and the Monarch team time to escape and sacrificing herself in the process. With Ghidorah distracted, Godzilla is able to fully absorb Mothra's powers, which it uses to go nuclear, killing Ghidorah and destroying most of the city. Rodan and the other titans then bow down to Godzilla, their new king. The story continues in Godzilla vs. Kong. It is now 2024 and Monarch has taken control of Skull Island to monitor Kong. The Iwi tribe of island natives have all died out, except for a young deaf girl named Gia, who communicates with sign language with her friend and protector Kong. Gia has been adopted by Monarch scientist Eileen Andrews, whose job is to study and monitor the giant ape. Meanwhile, Apex Cybernetics employee and Titan Conspiracy Theory podcast host Bernie Hayes discovers that his employers may be plotting something sinister. As Bernie downloads evidence, the Apex facility is attacked by Godzilla. In Godzilla's wake, Bernie discovers a giant robotic eye. Due to the unexpected and unprovoked attack, the world begins to turn on Godzilla and fear his potential for destruction. Among those that have begun to fear Godzilla is Monarch's new director, Mark Russell. His daughter Madison is a fan of Bernie's podcast and insists that there must be more going on. When her her father refuses to listen, Madison teams up with her friend Josh to seek out Bernie and investigate the Godzilla attack themselves. Apex Cybernetic CEO Walter Simmons promises the world he will find a way to defeat Godzilla and develops Hollow Earth Aerial Vehicles, or HEVs, which will allow humans to finally travel through the Axis Mundi and into the actual Hollow Earth, believing that the hidden world could contain the untold resources needed to defeat Godzilla. Simmons recruits former monarch scientist Nathan Lynn to lead the team into the Hollow Earth. Nathan recruits his old friend and colleague Eileen to aid the mission as the team needs a Titan to guide them to the Hollow Earth. And Kong, whose home on Skull Island is becoming uninhabitable, could potentially find a new home in the hidden world. Madison, Josh, and Bernie investigate the wreckage of the Apex Lab before accidentally stumbling into an underground hyperloop system that transports them all the way to an Apex Lab in Hong Kong. There, the trio discover that Walter Simmons has villainous plotted to turn the world on Godzilla to gain support for his secret superweapon, a giant titan-esque robot known as Mechagodzilla. Simmons' right-hand man is Rin Serizawa, the villainous son of Ishiro Serizawa, who resents his father largely abandoning him to fulfill his mission with Monarch that eventually led to his death. Using a skull of Ghidorah that he bought from Alan Jonah, Rin is able to telepathically control Mechagodzilla to do his bidding. Apex does not yet have enough energy to fully power such a massive of weapon, leading to Simmons' need to explore the Hollow Earth. As Nathan, Eileen, Gia, and an Apex team, led by Simmons' daughter Maya, transport Kong to a Hollow Earth rift in Antarctica, their convoy is attacked by Godzilla, who battles and defeats Kong before retreating. The Apex team take the injured Kong to the rift, where Gia tells the giant ape that he may find a long-lost family inside the secret world. And so, Kong enters the rift, leading the Apex heaves into the Hollow Earth. Earth. Nathan and Eileen are dazzled by this hidden world, with an ecosystem and titan creature similar to Kong's home on Skull Island. The team journey through the world with Kong as their protector from its dangerous inhabitants, before eventually finding an ancient throne room. Nathan and Eileen realize
realized that Kong and Godzilla's ancestors had fought many battles for supremacy of the Hollow Earth. Kong finds a giant battle axe made from the bones of Godzilla's ancestors and places it into a shrine, before taking his seat on a giant throne. The battle axe then reveals Hollow Earth's energy source, which Maya and her Apex team immediately steal and send back to Simmons at the Apex base in Hong Kong. When Nathan and Eileen protest this, Maya's team turns on them, holding them all at gunpoint. Maya and her team flee, abandoning Nathan, Eileen, and Gia to the creatures of the Hollow Earth. But Kong acts as their protector, fighting off a swarm of titan creatures known as Hellhawks before killing Maya and her entire crew. In Hong Kong, the new energy source is enough to fully power up Mechagodzilla, which attracts Godzilla, who had been attacking Apex bases in an attempt to thwart their superweapons creation. But instead of battling his robotic rival, Godzilla uses his atomic breath to drill a hole straight from Hong Kong into the Hollow Earth, where he calls on Kong to engage him in battle, just as their ancestors had. Kong races to Hong Kong to fight Godzilla, followed closely behind by Nathan, Eileen, and Gia in their last remaining heave. In Hong Kong, Godzilla and Kong get into a brutal battle in which Kong uses the axe to defend himself against Godzilla's atomic breath. Ultimately, Godzilla defeats Kong, resulting in the giant ape being left for dead. As Mecha Godzilla is activated to battle Godzilla, the mind of Ghidorah takes control, killing Simmons, leaving Rin for dead, and quickly overpowering Godzilla. In the Apex base, Madison, Josh, and Bernie search for a way to deactivate Mecha Godzilla. Outside, amidst the battle, Nathan manages to detonate the heave on Kong's chest, acting as a giant defibrillator to resuscitate the giant ape. Gia convinces Kong to align with Godzilla, leading to the former Titan rivals teaming up to battle Mecha Godzilla together. As Madison, Josh, and Bernie temporarily short circuit Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla uses his atomic breath to power up Kong's battle axe, which the ape uses to destroy Mecha Godzilla once and for all. In the end, Godzilla and Kong decide to end their species' eternal feud and coexist in peace. Madison reunites with her father Mark, and Nathan, Eileen, and Gia return with Kong to the Hollow Earth, where Monarch sets up a new research station, and Kong is able to live safely and freely, and take on his rightful mantle as king.